Uh, my name is Sean Smith. I'm leading uh, product management for GraalVM. And today I'm going to give you a brief introduction to what's new in GraalVM Enterprise uh, 20.3. Um, there's uh, a lot of things that went into it. There's no time for everything today. So I'll give you the highlights of what's, uh, what's happened in 20.3 and in the 20 series in general, and then dive into a few topics that are of, uh, I think, well, key interest and certainly uh, I find quite interesting. So hopefully you will too. So if you are not familiar, and I, I'm guessing if you've called in today to the call, uh, the webinar, you probably are, but GraalVM has three key components, or at least three, uh, that we focus on. So our, our JIT compiler, which is a Graal compiler. It's a, it's a bytecode compiler, plugs into the hotspot JVM, and uh, produces basically more efficient uh, bytecode or machine code to accelerate Java applications. So Java, Java Scala, anything that's bytecode, uh, Java bytecode um, can take take advantage of the uh, performance optimizations that the Graal, the Graal compiler provides. Uh, the second area, an area that we get a lot of attention on is our ahead of time support in native image. So we can take Java applications and generate native machine executables uh, for different platforms. And uh, that well, I'll dig into a little bit in, in today in terms of the, uh, the features we've added in 20.3. And the third thing we're quite well known for is being able to run multiple languages. So languages that are not native to the JVM, um, they typically run on other runtimes or uh, or standalone, such as uh, Ruby, uh, JavaScript, and, and so on. So uh, I have some features for each of these three areas in 20.3 I'd love to talk about today. So the first thing to, to uh, share with you is that 20.3 is our first long-term support release. So GraalVM was released, uh, well, GraalVM Enterprise was released uh, last spring in 2019. Uh, and that ver was version 19, of course, the, the numbers reflecting the year. And now with 20.3, we're in the final uh, release of the 20.x series. And it is uh, in the condition that we, we believe is, is sufficient for long-term support. So customers can build on, on GraalVM 20.3 uh, and know that it's gonna be around for a long time supported following the normal Oracle uh, support practices. So that's a nice, uh, a nice platform that uh, gives you the, the peace of mind that it's going to be around and supported and, and stable and get security patches and so on for, for the long term. Uh, if you are running on an earlier release, so a 19 feature release or a 20 feature release, 20.1, etc., cetera, uh, we do recommend you upgrade. Uh, there are improvement improvements in performance, which I'll, I'll touch on. Uh, there are a few new features again, which I'll touch on. And, and more, maybe most importantly, there are security fixes. So every quarter, uh, a new uh, release comes out from GraalVM with all the latest CPUs, the, the, the patch set update uh, to ensure that you all the vulnerabilities that are that are known are, are patched. So we do recommend you upgrade. Uh, no matter what series you're on, please uh, get the latest release. So uh, what's new in 20.3? Well, there's three, again, the three areas. In terms of Java application uh, performance or, or bytecode application performance, uh, the, the JIT compiler is now supported uh, fully on Windows. And we have a number of new optimizations uh, that are actually improving our performance. I'll give you some stats in a sec, uh, but um, we continue to, to increase the performance of GraalVM for your Java applications. So applications you're running today or have been running in the past will, will be running faster on GraalVM 20.3. In the area of Java microservices and containerized workloads, which is really the, uh, the, 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 the sweet spot for native image, uh, one of the sweet spots, uh, we've added G1 garbage collector support. So if you're used to using G1 on a hotspot, you can now in GraalVM Enterprise, you can enable the G1 garbage collector and take advantage of its, of its specific features uh, if it's suitable for, for your workload. Uh, the old garbage collector is still available, but it's uh, up to you to choose. Uh, you can benchmark your application and see which one suits your, your needs best. Uh, the time it takes to compile a Java app into an executable um, is still not as short or as fast as we would like, um, but we have we continue to improve the performance. So the time it takes to generate is is, is going down, and we'll continue to focus on this area to make it a, a good user experience for for building native executables. Uh, if you follow the Hotspot world, you know that a few releases ago, I'm thinking maybe two years ago, uh, Hotspot had a few gaps around. Uh, correcting resource awareness uh, API. So when the Java app, your Java application says, how many CPUs do I have? How much memory is there? Um, for a while there, it was getting, if you're on a container, it was getting the actual memory and the CPU count for the host machine rather than the container. Uh, so it's incorrect. Uh, so that's been corrected in, in, in Hotspot and it's been uh, fixed in, um, in native image also on uh, from GraalVM. So now your, your native executables can find out how much RAM and, and uh, processors and so on are, are available. 
And uh, a, a final uh, topic here I want to actually get into a little bit in, in a moment is support for dynamic linking and static linking of, of uh, native images, which uh, really make us it provide some different interesting options around uh, uh, tiny or, or distroless containers, uh, container images, which are currently uh, sort of in vogue for all kinds of good reasons, actually. Uh, and finally, in our multi-language support or, or, or uh, uh, language implementation framework languages, uh, we've added some support to control the resources that those, those applications can consume. Uh, and I'll show you the APIs and, and give you an idea of why this is important in the context in which it's, it's useful. So, but first, uh, let's give you some numbers. So 20.3, we're seeing it's about 6% faster than 19.3. So in one year, we've seen a, a fairly significant performance improvement basically built on compiler optimization and other optimizations we're, we're putting to the platform. Now you don't often see, you know, these kinds of numbers, you know, year to year, but we continue to, you know, focus on performance. That's kind of a sweet spot for Graal VM. And you can see here that from uh, the red, red uh, columns, which are our baseline 19.3, which is about one year ago, um, over to uh, through the different releases. So 20.1, 20.2, and now 20.3 you see con continuous improvement in, in the performance. So our throughput of applications goes up. Uh, if you're not familiar with some of these uh, benchmarks, like Renaissance is a good example of a, a very broad uh, a benchmark that's focused on uh, real world uh, workloads. So not just like loop unrolling and or, or not loop, uh, loop optimization or counters. Uh, it tries to run real workloads, Spark, Spark workloads uh, and so on to try and you know, give you some reasonable idea of how would a JVM perform on uh, something you might actually be doing rather than just, you know, cal calculating Fibonacci. So you see in these benchmarks, we're doing really well and we're really pleased and we will continue to focus on um, performance, right? Because that's what, that's what we do. That's what uh, Grolium is about. So I'll, I'll give you an example of one of the new optimizations that's in uh, Grolium Enterprise, um, which is this partial loop unrolling. And if you look at the code up the top, you've got a simple loop. You don't know what the size of the array is that's being processed here, the array A. Um, but we're going to iterate across that. And for every element, we're going to do some work. Right? It could be anything. Um, now, every time you go through, through a loop, you have to jump back. If you look at the machine code that's generated, there's, there's basically a loop uh, with a you know, series of instructions, hop back, increment counters, and so on. So there's a fair bit of overhead for, per item. Um, in our partial unrolling um, optimization, we are essentially batching or, or inlining parts of the loop. Like we don't know how big the loop is uh, because we don't know how many elements are in this collection. And so we, we can use some heuristics. In fact, I'll show you some API to control it, but we can inline a certain number of uh, steps or element processing uh, and do them all in one go and then loop jump back to the beginning. So we can certainly cut a certain amount of overhead. Uh, in this case, we've got what we call an unroll factor of three. So we're gonna do three at a time. And you can see that uh, at the end, there's an extra loop at, uh, at the bottom, which cleans up. So if you have a collection that doesn't divide by three, you kind of work through threes, batches of three, and then at the end, you clean up the rest that are remaining, the one or two that are left over. So this is, uh, it seems like, okay, this is pretty straightforward. Now, the point of this is, of course, is this is what the compiler is doing. So you write the code up top, and the compiler essentially generates machine code that reflects what you see on the bottom. So uh, one of the things we do emphasize with people, uh, and loops aren't very exciting themselves, but uh, when working with uh, Java applications to use the abstractions that are there in Java, use streams, uh, use all the abstractions available because it gives the compiler a lot more room to optimize behind the scenes. And this, this is a case where we're actually optimizing a fairly low level uh, loop operation, right? loop, loop uh, instructions. So what's good about this? Well, it actually makes the code go faster. Uh, we have some micro benchmarks that we're, we've run that show us up to 15% performance improvement, which is fairly significant. Uh, on larger suites, uh, we've seen up to, up to eight. So it varies and it really depends on the workload, like any optimization. Um, and GraalVM has a number of optimizations in uh, or phases, compiler phases in, in the, uh, the pipeline. It does depend on what the code's doing, whether a particular optimization is applicable. Right, so if you have a loop like this, well then this optimization will kick in. If you have no loops, uh, this optimization will, will never come into, uh, come into play. So it actually does improve performance, uh, which is the key, the key advantage. Uh, disadvantage is code size does increase. Certainly that's one of them. So you know, rather than having a, a loop with one uh, line, uh, now we have a loop that contains you know, basically inlined multiple statements. So what could be happening in that loop could be a bit larger. So as we inline this and unroll this loop, 
um, the code size does increase. So there are trade-offs and there are the sort of uh, some rules of thumb or some heuristics we apply to ensure that we don't generate massive applications, yet we get the advantage of this loop unrolling. And uh, as I said, there's a lot of op options for you to, to tweak here. You can try it yourself. You can set some, some limits. You can try some numbers uh, to un un unroll uh, factors yourself and, uh, and see how your, your workload does. All right, let's uh, switch gears over to uh, native image and containers. Uh, so if you've heard about distro list containers, these are containers that are designed to contain minimal operating system. Uh, they do things like have no shell, there's no SSH, there's really just enough operating system for your application to run. Main goal being to, well, two, two goals. One is size, so smaller containers are good. Um, for all kinds of reasons, transferring uh, from a re uh, registry into your uh, to a machine across the network, smaller is faster. Uh, but maybe more importantly is surface area reduction for attack, right? So attack surface area. If you just don't contain um, various Linux utilities, then then you've eliminated that that attack vector. So uh, we are looking at this and static linking or, or or even dynamic linking both fit into the use of uh, Gravity native image inside of Distroless and even Scratch containers. So let's just look at that and and uh, see how this works. So just to sort of step back, um, if you were thinking about running Java in a container, you've got roughly three elements. You've got your source code or your application code, I should say. You've got the various JDK classes, uh, a set of jars, and you know what they are. They're in the class path there. And then you have your base OS and its utilities. So as I said, you don't probably need everything in the operating system. So what you see is there's a whole chunk of stuff that we can throw out, right? So when you're building these, or when, when you're building a, a lightweight or distroless container, they're going to throw out uh, things you don't need, um, things that are uh, that could provide some um, insecurity, like I say SSH and so on. So take that out. Um, you probably aren't using all the Java applications or, or Java classes in the JDK, and so you can use things like JLink to, uh, if using modules, to remove all the modules you don't need in your application. So you can shrink down the footprint of the JRE essentially uh, by tossing out things you don't need, um, <clears throat> which is a really, it's a nice improvement, um, but doesn't quite go all the way. Uh, the next reduction can be achieved through GraalVM native image, where we take stripping uh, down to uh, like this, down to the extreme. So when you're compiling with GraalVM native image, we are discarding all classes. Uh, we are discarding all methods of classes. We are discarding the fields of classes that you don't need, right? So you may have a class that you use all the time. It has five or six fields. You use two of them. Uh, the others are gone. They're just removed because they're never part of the code, right? They're never reachable. Uh, they're never used. They can be removed. And so uh, with native image, we can shrink down uh, an application down to just the classes from the JDK you need, just the classes from your application you need, um, and build an executable. And we can actually then dynamically link in uh, Libc in the container you're running. So if you're going to go on to a distroless container um, that contains Libc, you can build a, a, a native image that uh, is missing just Libc. So we call it mostly statically linked, it's statically linked except for the lib, Libc, and deployed in that container and, and basically li linking takes place. So that's a nice solution. If you're deploying on Scratch, you can statically link, fully statically link in uh, libc and the application have a single executable. Um, now this is going to be slightly larger because it's got libc in it, uh, but still quite small. It's good, good for, well, for Scratch images where there's absolutely no operating system in that container whatsoever. So the options you can use a native image, um, this is for the uh, dynamic libc. The name is pretty self-explanatory. So you have an option here, static executable with dynamic libc. That's pretty good. Um, using this option, you end up with, like I say, an application where everything is compiled ahead of time and linked except for libc. Um, and here's a, a Docker file. Uh, I actually ran this and I'll show you sort of the numbers I get from running this, but um, using this uh, base distro uh, container image, uh, I can copy the executable I generate from Hello World, just like system out Hello World, that's all it does. Copy it in, call it app, and, and run it. Right, it works works like a charm. Uh, this also works for the Alpine Linux and with Muscle. Um, so we have support for Muscle. Uh, so if you're, run, if you're using Alpine and you want to use Muscle, you can do that. You can even um, build the um, fully statically, uh, or this, the, the, these, uh, these images, sorry, these native executables uh, on Linux uh, with Muscle if you uh, installed Muscle um, and have it available on your machine. So there's some, anyway, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do around 
Alpine and 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 Muscle and and uh, linking statically. Um, if you're set up, it's all in our uh, in our do updated docs. If you're on static, if you want to statically link everything, just minus minus static. Uh, and I put jar and app name here. You can actually use classes and class passes. Many more options, but the simple case is: here's my executable jar. Um, compile it down to native image, please, and um, make it fully self-contained. You can copy that to scratch, and it'll run. It's pretty straightforward. Now, why this is, you know, useful is 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 these numbers basically. So uh, the left two numbers. Um, uh, two charts here for, for OpenJDK based numbers came from uh, my colleague David Delabassi, uh, who uh, talks a lot about running Java in containers. Um, if you're running the full GRE, uh, which is probably a mistake, it's, it's quite large. Um, with uh, JLink, you can shrink that down quite a bit, and you can do a lot of things with JLink to, to strip out stuff you don't need, debug uh, information, all kinds of try and shrink your, your footprint down. But really, with native image, we go the extra mile and we, you know, extra compression, right? Extra stripping. I shouldn't say compression because it's just stripping down um, your app to its bare essentials. So uh, I, I basically did this. I built a little Hello World app with a Maven application. Um, I ran clean on it. I ran the static, and here's my my app, right? Hello World snapshot. It's a single jar, executable jar with everything in it, uh, and that produced a, uh, a jar, uh, sorry, a native image of about 11 meg. So it's statically linked. It contains libc. Uh, this is on Linux. This is on an um, uh, Oracle Linux on uh, an OCI Oracle Cloud infrastructure uh, virtual machine I was working on. So I got about 11, 11 meg for that. Uh, I ran UPX to, to compress it. So again, I, I want small, I want a small footprint. So if I run UPX on that, I can I can sh I can shrink that down to a three and a half meg or so. Uh, and then if I build that and build it uh, with the uh, Docker file for scratch, I get out an image that's slightly bigger, right? So it's it's almost not the same. So I can, build a th I can build an application running in Docker that's a three meg application. I mean, it doesn't do much, it says hello world, um, but that's a pretty impressive result, uh, I, I think. If you're going to uh, run on something where you do want to link to libc, it's basically the same thing. I made a slightly ver different version of this, this application. Um, with libc dynamically linked, uh, the image size shrinks down from 11 meg down to 9.3 because it doesn't contain that library. Otherwise, it's basically the same. I again run a UPX on it, shrinks it down further, and build a Docker container image using the uh, Docker file I just presented. Uh, and it takes me down to 19 meg. Now, that compares, you know, I mean, it's a lot bigger than the, the scratch image uh, because because it has more operating system in it, right? So there's more things it can do than in Scratch. Um, you don't have to package everything with your app. There's, there's things in the image. But still, that's a significant um, significant benefit, um, being able to build these amp up, uh, these native images out of your Java app. And that's pretty small. 20 meg is, is uh, the size of a few jars uh, these days. So that's that's actually a really good result. This is, so this has uh, come to uh, sort of completion in 20.3. We have the dynamic, we have the mostly mostly or static, we have the mostly static uh, linking and, and muscle support. And uh, I, I assume that if you're looking at native image, you're probably interested in containers. So this would be good news uh, for you. Okay, let's go look at the uh, multi-language support. So uh, running other languages on Graal VM. So one of the, one of the key uh, use cases for this support. If you're not just running, say, Ruby, uh, and we do run Ruby extremely fast uh, compared to the uh, MRI runtime, uh, if you're looking at Ruby or JavaScript um, by itself, that's one thing. But if you're running a Java app and you want to embed some Ruby or, or JavaScript or whatever it is, um, we have support for that. And one of the use cases we have is, for example, Oracle NetSuite, um, who, are you, who use JavaScript uh, to allow their end users to um, to extend the platform. So you can basically a scripting language for a Java application. You can use JavaScript. And the JavaScript can manipulate Java objects and interact with the, with the application. Uh, the danger is that the, these user supplied scripts could be malicious, right? They could do bad things or they could, um, you know, you can imagine you don't want uh, applications to do a system exit. Uh, so we can restrict APIs that these applications can use. What we've done in this in 20.3 uh, we have added experimental features that allow you, allow us to um, contain the amount of resources that an application can consume. So if you look at this source code here, uh, my sample, I'm building a context running some JavaScript. I've enabled the experimental options, and I'm saying the max CPU time is 500 milliseconds. So 
this is saying that within this context, within this JavaScript execution environment, the applications can only run five, for 500 milliseconds. So here's my application, while true, uh, which of course will run forever, uh, which would be a bad idea because it's just sitting there chewing through CPU um, as it runs. So in this, this little sort of test, try, try this. Um, we will never get here because what's going to happen is because of this 500 millisecond time, it's going to be interrupted. We're going to get an exception. We're going to catch that and say, yeah, um, that application has exceeded its allocated um, CPU time. Uh, and that's only one of the resources we can use to constrain to constrain applications. So we have a few um, maximum number of statements you could execute, CPU time, uh, stack frames, number of threads. Uh, there's a number of different things we can use to to constrain these applications. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so you do need to enable them with experimental options, but it's a nice way to put guardrails around around these la languages. If you are interested in building scriptable Java and you want to use these languages, this will be invaluable, especially if you're going to expose these things over the internet, um, uh, which which actually people do, to upload these, these scripts and have them run uh, and be productive. But uh, we need to guard against uh, you know threats like uh, infinite cons CPU consumption. All right, and the final area I'll talk about for 20.3 is around uh, tooling. So. Uh, today, if you want to get to GraalVM, you have to go off to uh, GraalVM.org uh, to get the community edition, or you go to oracle.com uh, slash GraalVM to get the enterprise edition. Um, we are trying to make it uh, or improve the developer experience, so we've added support into uh, Visual Studio Code um, for da both download of GraalVM installation and then utilization. Um, we've also added support for Micronaut, so you can go today to micronautlaunch.io and go through a little wizard and, and fill in a few questions and it'll give you a, a zip file of a, a sort of template to bootstrap. Uh, we've incorporated that functionality right into Visual Studio Code so you can actually get started with Quell VM and Micronaut uh, without even leaving the IDE. So to zoom in here on this slide, you can see here on the left, uh, we have a, there's a G there. I think we've changed that. This is actually a, not, not the final screenshot, but we have a GR uh, for Quell VM. Uh, for now, and you can see on the top, it says GraalVM installations. There's a few icons. One of them is a down arrow with a plus. You can download and install new versions uh, of GraalVM. You can see here I've got a number of installed enterprise and, uh, and community. So the process is pretty easy. You click the plus button. Uh, you pick community and enterprise. Uh, I picked enterprise and pick a version, 19.3, say, for example. Pick your JDK version. Accept the license and for enterprise in this case, and, and you're done. So that, that's basically it. Now, once it's installed, I've got a little video here to show you what it looks like to uh, work with that and to build a Micronaut application. So you can go to the command palette, you can create a Micronaut project, and you have a nice landing page for Micronaut tools, and you pick your version of Micronaut. In this case, I'll pick two and three. I want a basic Micronaut application, uh, and pick which version of GraalVM I'm running on and give it a project name and a, and a package to work in. Um, one of the things that's nice, well, here's Java, of course, too. Um, Micron has a lot of options for, for features you support, that they support. So one of them is native image. Uh, it's very well suited to build native image, image applications. So we can choose native image support, and that'll basically update the Gradle build, uh, provide a task for native image generation, we'll see. So choose our options, uh, create a folder and uh, for the project, and should open up in the workspace. And here we go. So you can pop open the source. And again, this is a this is pre-final uh, code you're seeing. So you may see a few uh, uh, things here and there that are not final. Um, here's the application. I can put a breakpoint in. I can basically open up the run debug and click on that and run this application. Get a breakpoint on the left. You can see the usual stuff, uh, and local variables, stack frames, and so on. Um, works great. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I want to build native image uh, out of this. And what, like I say, what I mentioned before is that Micronaut is particularly good in that it is designed to um, be all, uh, all, all um, no reflection at runtime. It's all, everything's handled at build time. So it's very suitable for ahead of time compilation. Um, because we chose native image feature, the Graal, uh, the, sorry, the Gradle uh, task native image is being um, added and running here, uh, running it at accelerated speed, because remember, if you remember, I mentioned that uh, we like it to go faster. Uh, for demo purposes, it's a bit too slow. 
So that's about two minutes to compile a full application. If you take a look here at what we've produced, uh, it's a 59 megabyte application. That's a, that's a fairly minimal um, um, Micronaut application, but there's a certain amount of, of uh, get in the door cost uh, with frameworks that it's, it's, uh, or pieces it's using. So, so that, um, that's the tooling we have. And that's, that's gonna come out, uh, sort of GA will lag a little bit, maybe a week or so, because it's built on some uh, Apache NetBeans components that we're waiting upstream uh, to release. So there were some bug fixes, that we bugs we found during the development of these, these components that uh, were fed upstream. Uh, we're waiting for those, those features to ship so we can call this a final release. Uh, but uh, it's uh, gonna be available, available very, very soon. All right, well, that's a fast uh, sort of deep dive on, a, on a, about three topics. Uh, there's more in 20.3. If you go to our homepage, you can, you can certainly download 20.3, give it a try. Uh, you can also find us on Medium, and I see it's not, not in here, but on Medium, we have a, a blog post about the new features, the highlights in 20.3. These features I mentioned, plus a few more are mentioned uh, that I didn't have time to, to include today. And uh, we hope you give it a try. Like I say, 20.3 is uh, LTS release. It will be around for some time. Uh, it will uh, get all the uh, extended support options that you would expect from, from Oracle Java SE. And I uh, hope you download it and give it a try and look forward to hearing uh, your feedback on Twitter or Slack. Um, that'd be great. Thanks very much. And thanks uh, for joining today.